Turner's habit as an artist was to make sketching tours in the summers, filling sketchbooks to produce material from which to work up finished watercolours. And in 1797, he was travelling in Northumberland and he made his first visit to Scotland. He came across and drew the abbeys in the borders, famous sites like Kelso, Jedburgh, Melrose. He wanted to paint sublime mountain scenery, which of course there's an abundance of in Scotland. And so in 1801, he embarked upon an extended tour. Turner's pictures of Scotland um, embrace a whole range of subject matter. Um, he produced a series of large pencil drawings which explore the Scottish Highland landscape in wonderful atmospheric detail. He produced taut commissioned watercolours on specific subjects like Heriot's Hospital, like famous castles and abbeys. Um, and he also was interested in modern life. You see steamers appearing in his pictures, which is quite unusual for the time. He was commissioned by the engineer Robert Stevenson to produce a watercolour of the Bell Rock Lighthouse, which he actually did based on drawings by another artist, and on Stevenson's wonderfully atmospheric description of what it's like to be at the Bell Rock Lighthouse in a storm. And from Turner's watercolour, you can absolutely see how his lifetime painting the sea made him visualise that experience. Turner's relationship with Walter Scott began in 1818 when Scott and his publisher Robert Cadell asked Turner to be one of the artists who would produce illustrations for Scott's provincial antiquities and picturesque scenery of Scotland. And this was intended to be a 12-part serial publication with high-quality illustrations by a number of artists of whom Turner was by far the most famous. They knew that having Turner on the project would increase their circulation. And this was actually the start of a long working relationship with Scott. And in 1831, Turner came back to Scotland to stay with Scott at Abbotsford. We have two vignettes of Abbotsford in the Vaughan bequest at the Scottish National Gallery. One of them shows the waterfall Rymer's Glen on the Abbotsford estate. And it was obviously painted after Scott's death because it was known to be a favorite spot of Scott's and his walking stick is propped against a bench by the side of the stream. And this is Turner's really sort of poignant memorial to Scott. Turner made a number of oil paintings, predominantly after he'd returned from trips to Scotland. He did paint oils of the visit of George IV to Edinburgh, uh, perhaps in the hope that he would get a royal commission to produce a grand worked up series of these, which unfortunately didn't happen. But perhaps his most famous oil that resulted from a trip to Scotland is his wonderful atmospheric lake picture of Fingal's Cave on Staffa. The captain of the steamer Turner was on agreed to circle the island and to allow them to land briefly. And on their last circuit of the island, Turner describes the sun breaking through, looking angry through the rainy sky. And he created this amazing, intense, visionary painting. It's incredibly atmospheric late oil. Five of the 38 watercolours in the Vaughan bequest are views of Scotland and Henry Vaughan bequeathed this amazing group of watercolours to the Scottish National Gallery in 1900 with the stipulation that they should only be shown all at once, free of charge and in the month of January because that's when daylight is at its weakest. Mm -hmm. 